Hello and welcome back. Um, this is Nellie Deutsch. I forgot to really introduce myself in um, the first opening ceremony because I thought that uh, Moodle MOOC 5 was more important than um, talking. If you could add in the chat box where you're from and uh, if you don't know much about me, there's a little bit of information there. As you um, write where you're from and anything else you'd like to the chat box, like to write uh, a little bit about my background with, uh, with technology. Actually, I started teaching uh, with technology um, a long time ago. Um, and um, I used whatever was on the internet, lots of emails and discussion forums. And then uh, Moodle started in 1999, 2000, actually 2001, it came out. I started using it uh, officially as an administrator with my own Moodle in 2003. So actually it's been uh, almost 15 years, quite a long time. Moodle has gone through a lot. And hello, Brian, good to see you. Moodle has gone through a lot in all those years. Uh, the different versions, plus it feels very, very different. And um, I would say that because there's so much you can do with Moodle, there's so many plugins or apps, applications, as they're called today, and there are theme, different kinds of themes, so that every Moodle has a different look. Every course in Moodle looks slightly different. So you may find that this Moodle is awesome, but once you get used to a Moodle uh, course, it's very easy to uh, get the feel of it. And I'm going to go through today, um, right now, <laughs> uh, through um, the layout of the Moodle. But before I do that, I'd just like to mention that Moodle MOOC 5, for those of you who are not here in the previous session today, is basically divided into two areas. One area is the Moodle training and everything that's hands-on uh, with Moodle. And we're changing things as we go. Uh, Tom Hodgers, who's there in the chat box, is uh, a facilitator and he does a lot of work. Uh, Tom doesn't sleep during the MOOCs. He stays up uh, I think 24-7. He's very passionate about making sure that everybody's comfortable and uh, well supported with lots of wonderful images and so on. But you can help out too. As a teacher I know that you enjoy helping others so feel free to help one another it's a great way to sustain learning. So one part is the Moodle training and everything about Moodle and almost everything because Moodle would take years. There's so much there. And then there's the uh, presentations or the webinars where you get a lot of information about how people are using technology, how they collaborate, what they're doing in their schools, for teachers, for training, and so on. So it's really a, a very, very enriching MOOC with two um, streams. And the reason I'm explaining this, because in the first Moodle MOOC, Martin Dogiamis, of course, was our special guest. And um, he asked, why have two venues? Why not just have the Moodle and everything else there. Well, the reason is because it's a MOOC and MOOCs stand for Open Massive Open Online Courses. And the open part, people often forget. The open means that you're open to spread out as Stephen Downs uh, likes to say in George Simmons. It, it's about the connections that you make. It's a social engaging and learning um, 
course. It's not just about, it's not a regular course. Even though the new MOOCs seem like regular boring courses, this is different. It's a uh, major purpose is to connect learners and to learn, for us to learn from one another. All right, so let's uh, start with the layout. For those of you that are not familiar with Moodle 2.7, Moodle 2.7 is completely different. Uh, Moodle 2.6 had a big change with the editor, and now Moodle 2.7 got rid of the editor. So there is something completely different, but you can get the old editor back, which is what I did because I wasn't going to use the new editor. It was, I didn't like it. It didn't have the features that I like uh, to have. Uh, Moodle MOOC, of course, uh, is free. We organize Moodle MOOCs three times a year in June. The first one was in 2013, the first ever in the world. And um, so there's June, October, and February. So three times a year for the Moodle MOOCs. Every Moodle MOOC is slightly different. And we hope that this Moodle MOOC will take us to the next step on this balloon and uh, let's see where it takes us. So let's take a look at, uh, first of all, this is the Moodle. It's called Moodle for Teachers. For lack of a better name, I chose this because that's what I was doing in another website called Integrating Technology for Active Lifelong Learning. I was teaching Moodle, so I thought that it would be nice to have a Moodle site just for teaching free Moodle. All the courses on Moodle for Teachers is completely free. So if you're interested in giving free courses, let me know and um, you may wish to do it on Moodle for Teachers. In addition, you might want to do a MOOC. If you're interested in conducting a MOOC, you're also welcome to use uh, Moodle for Teachers. Evo Sessions uh, also, Evo is Electronic Village Online. They also use the Moodle. Anyone who's interested uh, can use the Moodle for those sessions too, of course. Uh, completely free. If someone's having problems with the sound, I can get this closer to my mouth. If it helps, let me know. Sorry about uh, audio issues. Okay, so let's uh, get started. Oh, closer is better. <laughs> All right. So I'll speak closer. All right, so I see that it's, I'm looking at the bar to make sure. So the layout of every Moodle is exactly the same. Those of you who are uh, Moodlers, uh, can you tell me what it is? But it doesn't have to be, by the way. There are some changes. You don't have to have, oh, it's worse, is it? <laughs> oh, is it distorted in general? Hmm. So is it okay now? Yes. All right. So the too close to the mouth was not. Yeah, because it's like that. You know, if it gets too loud, it uh, causes a lot of uh, noise. Okay. So the layout is actually three, but it doesn't have to be three. It could be two and it could even be one. Okay. You can also, you can adjust the layout of a Moodle course page or pages. So there are lots of pages on a Moodle. This is the front page of Moodle for Teachers for Beginners. Okay, this is Moodle for Beginners. The Moodle for Non-Beginners is slightly different, but it has more or less the same things. That's interesting, Em. I'm reading what you just said there. Uh, what you need to do is you need to go to the WizIQ audio settings and make the changes there. Um, that usually helps. Okay. All right. So th this is the three layout. Okay, Elaine, there are two. I don't know if you were here. Elaine, were you here um, in the previous session today? Let me know in the chat box if you were here. No. Okay, you missed that. All right, you might want to watch the recording. Uh, there are two areas. One is for the uh, 
content of the webinars. So the WizIQ area is for the webinars mostly, and the Moodle is for Moodle training. Not everybody's interested in the Moodle training. Some are not. They're interested in the uh, webinars only. If you're interested only in the webinars, you can also get a certificate by just reflecting on the webinars. But if you want to get an added value of the MOOC, then it's the uh, Moodle training on Moodle for teachers. And what I'm going to show you in this session is how to navigate the Moodle for beginners. Okay, area. So first of all, number one is the left. By the way, um, have you all joined the Moodle for teachers? Let me just get a, a poll here because I really want to know how many of you did not. Okay, so let's just uh, get a poll here. Uh, have you enrolled? I'll call it enrolled in the course in the Moodle for B or Moodle for NB, which is non-beginners. So the answer is, of course, you can decide now in the chat box, but I'd really like to see, um, and I'll add another option, not interested. Okay, if you're not interested, that's fine. I know it sounds terrible, but that's fine. Okay, so let's um, take a look at the poll and see we've got 43 people here. So let's see what, uh, statistically speaking, so we've got, okay, people are voting. The link to what? Oh, there it is. Thank you, Tom. But you know what? If you Google Moodle for Teachers, you're bound to get it. With It's the only one with ORG. Okay, so we're getting people. Is it uh, Moodle? For me, as my current version of Moodle is, oh, oh, because it's old. Okay, so join, yes, that's what I said. If um, if you'd like to join, even though you are an experienced Moodler, but you've used an older version, the version we're using is 2.2 something or other, 2 point. Okay, so I see that um, out of 37, uh, 14 have not enrolled. Now, to enroll means that you have to create an account if you don't already have one. If you have one, you just enroll. If you don't, you create an account. You need to confirm your email, and then you can enroll in the course. Okay, so there are two things. There is sign up, there's a login, and then there's enroll, okay? And they're all quite different, okay? So there's terminology. But I see most of you have. There's a problem right now with the uh, those of you who uh, have an account but registered with Facebook, then you may have problems. Okay, so let me show you what the results are of the poll. Just let me know if you can see the results of the poll. Okay, you have an account. Very good, Lawrence. Oh, you can, isn't that? You're so lucky. I can't. I mean, I can, but not when someone else is showing it because of uh, Mac. If you're on a Mac, you may have a different experience. How many of you on a Mac? Any Mac users? Yes. Okay, do you see the um, the poll, the results of the poll, if you're a Mac user? PC, yeah. Okay, so I'm going to end the poll. I see that everybody voted. Is that possible? Wow, I can't believe it. Most of you voted. Isn't that amazing? That's good. That's very good. All right, so one, two, and three is the layout of a Moodle. Generally, a Moodle is like this, but it doesn't have to be. This is how I like it. 
I like the one, two, three. Uh, WizIQ also uh, adopted this one, two, three. So one, notice what's under one, what's under two, and what's under three. <laughs> Traditional, yes. Um, what's under one? Okay, notice what's under one. You can play around with one and three. Do you know what we call one and three? Any ideas what that's called? Anyone? Oh, it's quite different, Brian. Um, the editor is very different. Other things are wonderful, but the editor is not that great in 2.7, so ask them to get the same editor that you had for 2.6. That's right, they're called blocks. Blocks. Okay, Moodle is considered as modular, right? So these are the blocks, and you can play around with the blocks. You can actually uh, move things around as a teacher, whatever you like. Notice I have my traditional people. Um, if you click on people on the left, online users, I like the comments on the left, and then there's a navigation bar. Notice that you can minimize everything. Okay, so you can actually get rid of it. You don't have to see it. There's the calendar that I was talking about before. Okay, there it is. Now, the center is where the action is. The left and right are just extra information and it's very important for navigation but the learning activities and content sharing is in the middle okay so the middle is uh is the structure okay the skeleton of the whole thing that's what holds it together so if you don't want to look at the left and right i suggest you minimize them all try it you can't uh, by the way, for those of you that are afraid or, you know, it's very natural to be afraid. I always tell the story how I was petrified and shook all over when I took my class, the first computer class, and, um, and that I realized that I knew more than they did. But it could be scary when you're not used to it. So don't worry. You can't do any harm. You can click anywhere. Susan's here. She knows. And it's a lot of fun. Click anywhere. Minimize anything. <laughs> And if you get lost, it might be on the side. So play around with it. Okay, this week, play around. You're going to introduce yourself and play around. Okay, so feel free to, uh, to do that. Minimize and click on everything that you see. Exactly. This is the communication tab. Very good, Nevis. That's right. You're getting the jargon. It's called communication. And I've added something called number two. Anybody know what number two is? Very good idea, Tom. That's an excellent idea because the focus is in the center. Basically, you work in the center, so why not minimize everything else? In some themes, you can also um, put everything on the side. You can dock. You can dock things. You know what that means. That's docking, putting things aside. So, yes, um, we can communicate through this. And I just wanted to show you that you can add anything, any code to the center or anywhere because you have editors everywhere. Editors are everywhere. And I think that's really, really wonderful. All right. So this is the communication. All you need to do to start communicating, you don't need to create an account. And this might be nice with your students because they hate <laughs> creating an accounts, don't they? I know mine do. Oh, do we have to create another account? It's Facebook and that's it. They don't even know their email. Uh, they don't know how to log, you know, how to get in there. In any case, click on active learning and then you can start communicating. If you're lost, if you get out of Moodle, you don't know how to get back. If you have any questions, Keep this in mind, okay, as a way to communicate, try it out. Notice your name is here. Isn't active now, is it? Elaine, your screen? Um, no, you can't click on this, no. No, that's a very good question, excellent question. No, you can't. 
but you can click on the PowerPoint presentation. If I go into the course, I'll be able to bring you the PowerPoint and then you can click away. Okay, so let me get that for you. All this, I'm sorry you missed the first session, but all this um, is in the first recording. Oh, that's not the one. Sorry, I got um, Maria's. Here it is, layout of, okay, this is the, and this is clickable. You can click on things here. So um, let me share it with you. Oh, there. Okay. Thank you, Tom. There it is. Okay. So there's the link if you want to follow the PowerPoint. I'm now on slide number six. Okay. So you can do that. What should we do? That's an excellent question. I love that question. That has got to be the best question uh, anyone could ask. So there, there's a star for you, uh, Wajdi. What should we do exactly? Well, first of all, you need to enroll. I guess you also missed the first session. You need to create an account and enroll in Moodle for Teachers. Uh, do you see the link Tom has added just above you? After me? Okay, there's the link. Okay, great. You click on that, you create an account, you go into Moodle MOOCs, and you join Moodle for beginners or Moodle for non-beginners. If you watch the recording of this session, of the session before, sorry, you'll be able to get all the information before this class. Okay, so let me share the PowerPoint presentation of the opening ceremony. All you need to do is listen to the recording. I don't know, is the recording available already? I'm not sure. Anyone know if the recording... Okay, so there it is, those of you who missed the first session. And enroll. Exactly. Okay, so once... Ah, Bridget, brilliant. You're going to be doing this. This is exactly what you're going to be doing. Bridget, you are going, I mentioned this in the first, you're going to be documenting what you learn. Because I'm a believer of this idea, leaders of your own learning, and getting students and participants and teachers to document through audio and video and these arrows. Exactly. So you're going to be doing exactly what I'm doing, Bridget. What I'm doing is I'm demonstrating and modeling for you what you'll be doing. Okay, so you'll be creating a PowerPoint presentation like I did, and you're going to add the arrows with a free tool called Jing. So Jing cuts up whatever you want cut up, and then you can put arrows. So look up Jing, upload it to your system, and enjoy. And then you can add all these things to your slides. And then you'll learn how to speak and record yourself through a free tool called Screencast Omatic. And you're going to be doing all this. So you're going to be teaching about what you learn. Okay, that's the idea. The idea is to model uh, teaching as a way to learn. These are the badges. At the end of each week, you will be rewarded with a badge. Okay, and you see one, two, three, four badges for each week. How many of you have badges from MM4? Badges from MA4. MA4 was difficult. <laughs> MA3 was even more difficult. MM1. So you have Brian, that's great. So now you'll have a chance. It'll be much easier. I made your life easy, Joey. You'll have a chance to get MM5 and then MM6 and so on. We're going to be doing this three times a year. So as I said, we started in June 2013. This is the fifth Moodle MOOC. And the MOOCs, the Moodle MOOCs are in June, October, and February. So you get three a year. OK, 
okay, which is a lot, but every time it's different, completely different. All right, so this, if you click, sorry, if you click, you'll find this in the course. If you click on them, you will get information. And this is the information that you will get. Notice the criteria. And the criteria is very easy this time. Thank you, Nevis. You will be awarded the badge when you complete the following requirement. You will have to introduce yourself. You will respond to what is Moodle in the discussion form, and you will do a choice question poll called Moodle Experience. So three things for the badge. It's not a big deal. And consider yourself lucky because it was more difficult in the previous MOOC. I want you to take a look at this. This is your administration. Even though you're a student in Moodle for beginners and Moodle for non-beginners at the beginning, and then you will be a teacher with editing rights in the other ones, it's still called administration. Everything is called administration because you actually administer this area. You don't have too many rights. You can either unenroll, and please don't do this, or you can go into your grades, okay? But what I'd like you to do this week, after you enroll, is I'd like you to go into your profile settings. Go into your profile settings and know it by heart. Learn what's there because that's what you'll need to help your students. They're going to have to get their pictures up there. By the way, I was just grading students and if they didn't have their photos, I would have a really hard time. Okay, so photos are really, really important. They help us uh, remember things better in most cases. All right, this is the navigation. Okay, what you'll see as a student is home, which is the fr front page. You'll see my home, which is whatever you decide is your front page. And then you'll see this, and you can. I'd like you to go into everything and anything. Okay, you're going to explore and go into everything. You see the blue? All the blues are clickable. All these blues are clickable. So feel free to go in and click away. You can't do any harm. You can only learn. And who doesn't want to learn, right? So click away. Click away at all the blue wherever you can. Okay? Just click away. Again, as I said, you cannot do any harm. You cannot break or tear anything. Okay, it's very durable. Isn't that amazing? I mean, a, a few years, 20, 30 years ago, we couldn't even say that. We couldn't say something like that. I mean, everything was breakable um, or you could tear it up if it's paper, but here you can't do anything wrong. So feel free to click away and see where it takes you. Now notice I mentioned this before, the blue are links to pages. So if you, yes, I'm sure, Brian. Uh, so if you go into the, your browser, you'll be able to copy and paste the link. And I'm going to show you because when we share things, we wanna know exactly what we're talking about. So having a link will take us there. Links are actually roads, okay? They're roads. If you want to come to my house, you have to click on certain uh, roads to get to my house, right? Or to get anywhere. So think of click links as very important. All right, so I'm going to screen share. While I'm screen share, I'm going to take away my webcam. Okay, so I think it's better if you don't get my webcam. The sound should be better uh, for everybody. So let's start the screen sharing. As I screen share, uh, you may find that 
things drop to the bottom left. If they drop to the bottom left, just click on the chat, the attendee list, or the live video stream, and it'll pop right back. In fact, you can try it now. Uh, if you go into the minimize in my video stream, you can make it go down to the very bottom. Okay, so try it. Play around. Don't be afraid to try things out. That's what it's really all about. It's trying things out. So I'm recording this through Camtasia. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I'm doing, and you'll be able to see this in the recording for Camtasia. So right now, I got rid of the live video, the attendee list. All I have is the screen in the middle. And this is a technique that's very popular for online courses, such as Moodle and the virtual classroom on WizIQ. So let me take you to the course. Are you ready? Okay, so this is the course. It may take time for you to see what I see. Um, so this is Moodle for teachers. And I hope I don't lose audio, so I'm going to go back every once in a while. Uh, pop out the chat to make sure that everybody is okay. All right, everybody okay? Good. All right, so let's go back now. So, and into the course. Now notice this is, uh, these are tabs. Okay, now as a learner, let me go in as, okay, I am, I think I'm in as Nevis. Yes, I am. Sorry, Nevis, I uh, stole your ID. Teachers can do this. They can go in as any one of their students. And it's important sometimes because they can fix things, but it's also not that nice. But in any case, these are the tabs. Some of them are hidden and some are not. This is what I was talking about, communication. If you click on active learning, it takes you to, and I want to show you because this is where the idea of a tab. Okay, this is the link. I can click on it. There we go. And I can share it with anyone. All you need to do is add your name. I'm going to add Nelly. You don't need to create an account or anything. I'll click on join. And then I'll add my message. How are you doing? Okay, and then I'll click on say. And then you should be able to see it in the classroom. Right now, you don't see anything. And then I'm going to go back. Okay, so let's go back to the course. Let's see if it appears here. I'll refresh my page. And this is a lot of fun because you can communicate with your students. See, there it is. How are you doing? Isn't that magic? All right. And then I'm going to go into the left. Notice there are a lot of people here online. Laurie's here, Sonia, Jose, Priscilla. Nice. They're online right now. You can also add comments. How are you doing? I can also add it here. How are you doing? Okay, and save my comment. This is the navigation that I was telling you about. Just click on any of these. I want to show you something that you will find interesting. You see this participant? I'll click on it. It takes me to a page. Now notice what happened to the browser window. If I want to share this with someone, all I have to do is copy the information that's in the browser window and share it. Okay, right now there are 44 participants. I just want to go back to class and share the link to the active learning. You don't have to go through the website to get there. Okay, here I am. Now let's say I want to go back. What do I do? And this is where people get stuck. Where do I go? What do I do? Well, what you do is what's called you follow the breadcrumbs. We are, this is the page I'm in, participants. Okay, this is the page. Okay, that's the one. I go to the left of that, and this is the course. If I go further, this is the category. And then my course is then then home. I'm going to go here, okay, to the one next to that. And it'll take me back here. Isn't that magic? Notice where I am now. I'm here. It tells me where I am. This is the category, and then I'm out. Home is the front page. 
All right, so let's go to the overview and the syllabus, okay, which is next to communication. This is where I will go into the syllabus, read all about it, and if I have any questions, I'll click on support. Now, how do I do that? And I told you this is the blue that you click. Click on all the blues. You can't do any harm. Okay, notice there's a question here by Amina. Hello, Amina. And she says she has two separate accounts. And Tom has responded. You see the last post and I have the date and everything. So let me go and see what maybe I can learn from this. All right, so let's see what Amina wanted. And more importantly, what Tom responded. So hi everyone, I have two questions. Do I need to create two accounts, one to access this and one to access the Moodle practice area? The answer of course is no, because I showed you in the first session that you are automatically enrolled in the Moodle practice and in the teacher practice and manager. Okay, so Tom says, no, you don't need two accounts. You already subscribed to MP4, but now it's called TPA, Tom. Uh, however, it's not available to participants until week two. Well, I don't know if exactly week two, but pretty much, yes. Okay, so let's, now I'm in the breadcrumbs. Okay, I'm stuck. Where do I go? Do I go to the left? Never. Never go left or right at the beginning, unless you know what you're doing. So here I am. This is support. Okay, this is back to the discussion. And then I have overview of the syllabus where I was, and then MP4. What do I want to go? I want to go here, overview. All right, so here I am. Okay, this is overview. You can see where I am because it's white. And then I have week one. This is where you will spend your time. You will spend your time in the communication area, overview and syllabus, and week one introduction for most of the week. All right, so you can read how to introduce yourself, and that's where you can find out about Poodle. Okay, now notice these are discussion form. Notice the icons. You'll be doing all of these blue things. So go into everything that's blue and do what you're asked. Okay, go into everything blue. And then look what happens. I'm going to go in as Nevis, and no, that's not where I wanted to go. Let me leave that. I want to go, but when I do go, she'll get a tick here, her progress. If you don't know anything, go to the question mark. I hope you can still hear me. Let's go into the introductions, okay? Isn't that nice? It's all yellow. That's Moodle 2.7. Okay, now we'll wait for the editor. Notice this is the editor. Unlike 2.7, this is the editor for 2.6 because 2.7 is horrible. So I asked to get this. Now look what you can do. You can introduce yourself. I'll call this Nelly, but I can call it uh, Poodle. I'm going to call it Poodle on Moodle because I want to show you how to use uh, Poodle. But let me just make sure that you can hear me. Yes, you can. Okay, I just want to make sure. Now no notice what I'm going to do here. I'm going to introduce myself through a microphone or what would you like? Video or microphone? Let's start with a microphone. I hope I don't chipmunk. Sometimes um, I need to set my system. Oh my gosh, what is this? So many things are initializing there. Okay, let's go into insert. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to... There we go. I'm going to record myself. Ooh, I see there's a problem here. I'm recording myself, and then I'm going to stop. There are a lot of icons there. I'll get rid of them. I don't know why they're there, but I'll get rid of them, I promise. And then I'm going to insert, and there it is. But I'm also going to do a video. I hope the video is okay. I'm glad I checked this. Um... Okay, this is the, oh, it's still there, all those icons. Ooh, there I am. Hello. So I'm going to record myself. This is Nelly recording herself. And I stopped. Now it's going to, okay, now listen. 
to myself. Okay, that's it. And then I'm going to click insert. Notice insert. Okay, there it is. So I've got FLV, which is video, and MP3, which is audio. And then don't forget to post to forum. And this is going to be under Nevis. Nevis, I'll delete it. And then, oh, I have to get rid of these icons. I don't know why they're there. Okay, so there it is. There's the video here. And there's the audio. Are you ready? Now you can. Okay, that's me talking, and this is the video. Boy, do I sound funny. Okay, all right, Nelly. You can make it larger. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And make it smaller. There we go. All right. So now let's go to the breadcrumbs. Remember the breadcrumbs? Not up here. The breadcrumbs here. So I'm introduce yourself week one. Okay, this is where I go, and I'm going to go into the course. Okay, now, notice, Nevis, you've got a lot of unread posts. Now, what can I do? After I do all that, okay, I might want to add a video. Oh, yes, I want to add a video. Let me show you how you add a video. But a YouTube video or video, okay? So let me uh, go back. I can still edit, and I'm going to remove this because... I don't think Nevis wants all this stuff on her in her account. Okay, so uh, let's remove all that. And I'm going to add video. Okay, Vimeo. Vimeo and video. But let's make sure that everything is gone. Yes, it's gone. I'm going to go into Notice and play around with this. Get to know the editor into this. And then I'm going to look for a video because I don't remember what I want. There's YouTube video. I'll write Nelly because I don't remember. I don't have the link. And then I'll get all kinds of Nellies. This oh my is God, Nelly recording all the Nellies. herself. No, no, that's too and much, right? You totally agree, right? That's too much. Let's write um, Moodle MOOC 5. Let's see what I come up with Moodle MOOC 5. If you have, there we go. Here's Moodle MOOC 5. Select this. Insert. Don't forget the insert. And then we're not over. And then we do this. That's one way of adding a video, but that's not the only way. Okay, there it is. That's not the only way you can add a video. Myself. This is very mysterious. Ooh, I see there's a problem here. I'm recording myself, and then I'm going to... Oops. Okay, I had a, I'm on a, a Mac. This you is can Nelly tell. recording Back to the breadcrumbs. Okay, and now I'm going to do something else here. I'm going to show you. Let's go back to the editor. I want to show you something else. I want to show you that you don't need to do all that. All I need to do, and uh, let me do it now. All I need to do is go to YouTube. Okay, let's uh, get this link. I'm going to go to YouTube. I'll delete it. Okay, I deleted the link. It's not there anymore. Okay, it's gone. All I have to do is simply paste a YouTube link, hyperlink it by highlighting, go into insert, edit link, click on that, put the link in the URL box, insert, go away, save, and look what happened. You can do this for Vimeo and for YouTube. And look what happens. Voila! No embed, no nothing. This is really exciting. This happened for the first time with uh, Moodle um, 2.5, I believe. Okay, it's not showing because I'm on a Mac and Mac, my Mac is having some uh, problems right now, but it will show up, trust me. I would just have to um, take care of things on my end. It has to do with my computer. Now, notice what it says here. It says here, export, export, do everything. Don't be afraid. I want to show you something else. Let's go back to the breadcrumbs, to the course. And very quickly, I hope you're still getting this and the voice is still, oh no, it's not working. Oh my gosh. 
Oh, the recording stuff. Hi, Wayne. I hope How you are can you? hear me because I you guess probably you've heard can't. about the upcoming modal move. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's try again. So everybody lost me. I'm so sorry, but maybe maybe you didn't lose me. Maybe I just lost the class. Okay. It's my Mac. There's a problem with Macs and uh, Adobe Flash. They don't get along too well. So I'm not going to be able to get back into class, I'm afraid. Unless I... Uh, well, unless... I get rid of everything. Oh well. Mm, unfortunately, I clicked and everything got ruined. Well, I'm still recording, so hopefully you'll be able to get the recording. I'm really sorry that I should never have clicked where I clicked, but I did and I messed up. Sorry. It's tough being on a Mac sometimes. Um, I don't think my son would like to hear that since he's a, he loves Macs. Okay, I'll try to get in another way. Uh, this is, notice how I'm doing this. Okay, um, notice what I'm doing here. I'll get there before the time. Okay, now you can see what I'm doing as a result of um, my Mac and Flash and Adobe. Okay, I'll try to get back to class. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, well. Sorry, everybody. I'm really, really sorry, but um, it's a long story about Max. Now, I was here all the time. It's about Max. You see, because uh, I don't know if you guys have a Mac, but you might want to know this. If you have a Macintosh, if you're using a Mac and um, and you click on the volume, if you want to raise the volume on your Mac <laughs> while you're on YouTube video, or on Vimeo or anything flash based you everything will crash not your computer but whatever you're watching and you won't be able to get back oh it, Elaine it happens to you yes it has to do with the war between Apple and Adobe flash they're at war and it's all because of something called HTML, because Apple thinks that Java and, um, yeah, it has to do with, I don't know if it's business, <laughs> because Job started this, so I don't know. Yeah, it's Flash. That's the problem. So um, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have, every time it happens, but I thought it... It, it didn't happen. It just started about a month ago. So if you upgrade your flash, it happens. So what you need to do is you need to go to an earlier version of flash and then it won't happen. So that's the story. Of, so I'm sorry. But anyways, I kept recording because I'm on Camtasia. So I'm recording this anyways through another system. And I'll add this so you'll see what happened to me. It's always funny. I'm, but actually, I'm documenting what's happening to me. So um, click away. That was the idea. Click away as much as you can. And I don't know if you noticed, but there's the activities. 
And the activities that we have done so far are choices, external tools, forms, and resources. I also wanted to show you before I uh, got the flash um, virus that there's a blog menu. And I highly suggest that you connect your external blog with the Moodle blog or the Moodle site so that you can work on your blog and reflect while you're on the Moodle. Actually, you don't have to leave the Moodle. You can stay on the Moodle, go into the live virtual classes through the Moodle, blog and reflect through the Moodle. So everything can actually be within the Moodle. No, uh, Laurie, Laurie, do you have a wiki? Because if you want to get a certificate, yes, you will have to uh, blog. At least you'll have to write on your blog and share the link. That's all you have to do. But if you don't want to do that, you can have an internal blog on the Moodle in your account and then you can do the sharing from there. The only thing you have to remember is how to share a link. Now this is very important information that's why I'm forcing you to do certain things to uh, help you manage your connections online with your students and with others. So link a link is really important. Okay, so you have to be able to link and hyperlink or activate the link. Okay, so blogger is easy. Yes, Elaine, I don't know. Yeah, I think that uh, WordPress is a little more complicated. You can also use um, there are others. Uh, binder is a binder, live binder, I think that's what it's called. Uh, which is nice. There's some new ones that are fairly nice. Anybody else using something else? No, you can get everything on the Moodle. Now, what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to, we've got about seven minutes, is that correct? Uh, yes. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to explore this week and I'd like to you to document what you explore okay so document what you explore through screencast o matic okay try to um, it, it's completely free you don't have to pay for it all you need is to be able to go through screens and you can write actually on the screen. Otherwise, you might want to explore present, well, I don't like present me, move note or present me. Okay, and try to learn how to use them because that's what you're going to be doing starting week two. In week two, you're going to be using different kinds of video uh, creating screencasters for your tutorials. So basically, it's not a nice word sometimes, but you'll be creating tutorials of your learning. <laughs> you'll be creating presentations of your learning. So start now in week one. If you have questions, there are some experienced screencasters like Nevis. She's also new, well, not that new to Moodle, but she's still learning the basics. Uh, and there's a lot of basics, by the way. I know a lot of administrators who don't know much about Moodle as a teacher, uh, so they can't really help. So Nevis is someone that you can, uh, yes, Brian can also help. You know what, why don't you raise your hand if you can help? And these people, you'll see them online. If you see someone online, go to the, um, am I still, I'm not recording, no, I'm not. Go to uh, the comment box or this area. Do I have it here? No. Um, go to the comment box and ask for help. 
so um, you can't raise a hand, but thumbs up. Okay, there's Brian. You can act, add your name to the comment box on the Moodle too. Maria, you love it. Isn't it amazing? And I also like Jing. I live on Jing and Screencast-O-Matic. Uh, I love them both. They're great. I wouldn't be able to create a PowerPoint presentation without Jing. Okay, so if you could go into the uh, comment box, raise your hand there, and, uh, and happy Moodling. But this is more than Moodle. Moodle is a whole world full of engaging activities and it offers so much. Okay, so feel free to go into your blog here under your administration, course administration, your profile settings and explore. If you see a folder like this, go into it. Don't be afraid. This belongs to you. <laughs> it's, it's yours. Just go in there. You can't do any harm. Let me just um, uh, let me just make sure we don't get timed out here. There's a little more that I'd like to share with you. We've got a couple of minutes, but just to make sure, I'm going to extend. The idea is to engage participants, whether they're students, whether they're co-workers, whoever they happen to be, they're excited and we want to be able to share and not only share with them but have them share with us. So actually it's reciprocal. It's learning from each other through videos. Creating videos is a wonderful way to sustain learning as you teach someone else. And we do want our learners and ourselves to become learners of our own learning. And why? Why do we want to learn in the first place? Because it makes us happy. It makes us happy to learn. That's why you're here. That's why I'm here because we enjoy learning from one another. And that's what it's about. So Moodle MOOC 5 starts with you and I, with all of us. So I'd like to thank you and invite you to collaborate with whoever is there and see what you can do in week one. Explore, 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 click away, and have fun. And Tom will be there in case you touch something. Just in case. No, but there's nothing that you can do. No harm. So thank you, everybody. Hope you um, have a wonderful, wonderful week. And go into Christian, uh, go into the, um, the session before. Copy the chat. Thank you, Tom. We will help. Thank you.